video I will show you how I built this homemade wooden lifting table. It has a range of about 42 centimeters to about 1 meter and 37 centimeters. That's quite a lot. The hand crank is removable and is held in place with a little magnet. That way I can also use a nut, in my case it's 3D printed, and a little drill to move it up and down. And that works a little faster. But now of course, how much can it lift? I don't have an exact number, but let's lift something. For example, my workbench with strap wood on top and a drill press. Together this weighs about 100 kilos or so. And it's up. Makes moving it around really simple. My table saw weighs about 300 kilos, now I can only lift it up right here and not everything of it. But doing that, as you can see, is no problem. So I think its capacity is enough for what I needed. For example, moving tools, heavy tools. That is pretty simple now. What impresses me the most is that it can also lift the drill press when it's all the way down and the mechanical advantage is worst. And yes, it's also strong enough for this. Actually comfortable because it has a little bit of give to it. Anyways, let's get into the build. So I designed this back in February 2017 and built it about a month later and that took me about two weeks. So let's go a little bit back in time and see how all this went. It all began with sourcing materials. For the wood I needed a species that was dense, tough, not that expensive and also locally available. And there's only one logical choice and that is ash wood. If I only had a lifting table. And this piece is just about what I can still handle by myself. So this little big piece should be enough for all the parts. For the metal hardware I had to look around a little bit longer to get everything. Now I have a 20 by 4 Acme threaded rod that means 20 millimeter diameter and 4 millimeters per thread with a flange nut and a regular nut, an axial bearing that as you can see is only made for axial load, some flat stock, 12 millimeter shafting. 16 by 2, that means 16 outer diameter, 2 millimeter wall thickness, a brass tube, and bearings. And the best thing here is that they first sent the wrong bearings and then the right ones, which means free bearings. It took me a long time to find the right hardware for the joints because I needed a 4 cm long bushing for a 12 millimeter shaft. And the only really good thing I could find was the brass tube. And even that gave me some more issues, but you will see later more about that. Also, only the shaft and flat material I could buy locally in hardware stores. The rest of the hardware I had to order online. But now enough talking, let's start to prepare the wooden pieces. First, I cut the slab into smaller pieces so I could remove the bark on the table saw and cut them to rough width.
Next making one face and edge flat on the jointer. Then cutting them to rough thickness on the bandsaw. And to final thickness with the planer. I could do all the thicknessing with the planer, but with the bandsaw it's faster and doesn't create as much chips. The final width then again on the table saw. Parts for the scissors, parts for the top frame, parts for the bottom frame. Some of them still need a few cutouts and I need to make them before I glue them together. These are stopped cuts. I made marks on my fence for reference which you can't see. And here I'm trying my freshly sharpened one stroke saw. The chisel takes care of the rest. The front piece of the top frame gets holes drilled for the shaft and axial bearing. Then I glued the first parts of the frame together. scissor parts. All of them need three holes with the exact same distance, that's very important, and to do that I first need to make a little jig. I took a piece of the scrap and cut it to the exact same dimensions as the actual pieces, and this will be my template. I've already marked the very center point, and two lines at both ends. Then I took another piece of scrap and drilled two holes into it, and this I now can use as a compass. One hole I line up with the center mark, with the other one I can mark a line at both ends. The intersection of the lines is exactly where I need to drill. To check if it's accurate enough I put a piece of the brass tube through the middle hole. And this I can put in a piece of scrap. Now I drill a hole right here. Now when I rotate the template, the other hole should line up at the exact same spot. It's a tiny little bit off. Hmm. But I think it's good enough and I can also work with that. I just marked that this here is the short side. And at the end, if I always align a short with the short side and the other with the other sides, then the arrows will cancel each other out. I also shaped it a little bit just to give it some curves. And yes, the holes are a little bit offset. That's part of the design. Now just put that on a piece, line it up, and clamp it down. With the template, I then only mark the right hole position. And an S for short. Now it's just a lot of drilling holes and honestly that's just boring, boring. So I'll skip that. All the 
scissor pieces are drilled and shaped and also the frame pieces are dry so I can start gluing them into actual frames. I'll reinforce the joints later. Frames are now dry and I already marked the placement for reinforcement dowels. I started the holes with a bread point drill bit and did the rest with a regular one as it drills much better. Maybe this is a little overkill. Dowels along here are for reinforcing this rail because this will take part of the load at the end. Now while the frames are drying again I can start making the metal parts. Every hole of the scissor pieces needs one of these bushings. But before that I just couldn't resist. I am really looking forward to that. <laughs> Before you start commenting on a metal lathe, keep in mind that this was the first time me using one. I turned one side through and chamfered the outer and inner edge, then lined it up with the cutoff tool to set the right length and then parted it off. Then again chamfering edges and parting it off. Now they are all parted off and I now need to finish the other side. And then they are done. One problem with this tube material is that the wall thickness is not consistent. But I can work around that. I've marked on every piece where the thickest part is. And when I'm installing them, I always make sure that the mark faces the short mark that I made previously. By doing that, the arrows should cancel each other out in the end. At least in theory. Then I could trim down the dowels of the frames since they were already dry. Next I made the parts which connect the scissors with the frames, which are just small blocks with a hole. Unfortunately they didn't quite came out the same, actually none of them, but it's extremely important that the shaft has the exact same distance to the two faces that get glued. So I need to trim them now. Therefore I jigged up something simple on the table saw, just a piece with a hole where I can position the blocks with the drill bit. That way they are always referencing off of the hole. Now they are all equal distant in relation to the hole on the two glue faces. These two faces don't matter that much so I just rounded that over. And that's roughly how this will work. On the top frame this piece lines up directly with this edge so I'll only use one of these pieces and therefore the bolt then will screw into the side of the frame. 
Therefore, of course, I need to drill and tap a hole at the right position in the frame. And to locate this hole, I put the bread point drill bit into two of these pieces. And with those and the tip of the bread point bit, I can mark it. Pretty simple. Now I can glue it in place and I'll use the piece and the two washers as spacers plus the thickness of two pieces of paper for the thickness of the varnish and wood movement. While that's drying I cut the tracks to the bearings to size which provide a smooth and hard surface. Next the shafts for the scissor joints. Believe me or not, a fresh hexa blade is faster than the angle grinder and doesn't heat up the metal. To connect the individual scissor pieces I cut pieces of shaft to size, but there is one problem with that. Yeah, it doesn't fit into the bushings. Now there are two ways to fix that. I could either use a 12mm reamer and ream out the bushings to make them fit, but I don't have one. The other way would be to just turn down the shaft slightly and make them fit that way. And that's what I'm going to do. I've already zeroed the tool and I set it to turn away 0.15 millimeters. If I didn't have a lathe, I'll also use the bolts that I showed previously. So far so good. I cut them into right length later because now I have to make a test fit. The fit is very good but I won't assemble it any further for now because I first have to glue these inner pieces together because there is quite a bit of wiggle in the mechanism and by gluing these inner pieces together that should eliminate a lot of that. The best way to figure out how long the pieces need to be is when the parts are assembled. Now I roughly cut the pieces to size and then sneak up on the fit. A little bit shorter. That's the fit I'm looking for. One piece also needed a notch cut out to clear the threaded rod. I also need to make sure that the holes are perfectly aligned to each other when I glue it together. And I do that by just sticking a shaft and a threaded rod through two of the holes. And I just clamped it and I still can move the shaft and that tells me that the holes are perfectly aligned. And also the middle one would fit. While this is drying, I can work more on the shaft. Every one of them gets a threaded hole in each end. Later, I left a tap in the chuck and did all of that with a lathe. After that a chamfer and they were done. I've got 8 one for a links, 2 one to attach the links to the bottom and a long one for the bottom bearings. And the screw plus washer fit on both ends. I've also reinforced these cross pieces here with dowels and now I need to figure out where to glue these pieces where this can attach to. It basically just needs to be centered. I shimmed it equally with paper on both sides until it was tight, so that tells me now it's centered. Now I can 
take these with another washer and that's exactly where they need to be glued on. For the other one again a washer, the piece, another washer and two layers of paper for a little bit of slack. So right about here. Now time for a test assembly. Trickiest part of the assembly is getting the washer in between the joints. Now the first test. Man, it works. And the top and bottom frame also line up very nicely. Perfect. That's a lot of range. Very nice. This build not only should be a proof of concept, I also want this to be able to hold some weight, so let's test that. Well, that's pretty nice. No squeaking, no cracking. Perfect. Here the amount of flex. Now with the scissor extended a little further. No problem, cool. Next, the threaded rod. There needs to be something here that it can pull against to lift it up. There will be this block which houses the flange nut as well as these two bolts where the bearings are attached to. Therefore, I drilled and tapped holes in both ends. flange nut is about this thick so I'll drill with this bit from this side about to here and then from the other side with this bit that's a bit bigger than the front section of the nut. Now the bigger diameter of the nut. Now I don't have a force nut with that size, so instead I made a template for a router with a guide bushing. Then I drilled holes in the nut and the piece to secure it. Well, no interference when it's all the way down. And it can still rotate a little bit tighter than I thought it would be, but that doesn't really matter here. Then I cut the threaded rod to size and a friend welded the nut at the end so that I can turn the threaded rod with the nut. And I then turned the weld flat again. But now just to be on the really safe side, I'm also going to drill a hole all the way through for a cross pin. I already turned that pin to the right length.
Right now I can't lower it all the way because there's still a little bit of interference here and I have to make this cut a little bit bigger. But other than that, it works really nicely and I can start finishing it. That's better. Also right now there's nothing that can take the radio forces from the cranking. Because if you'd crank on an unsupported shaft, then it would just do something like this. So there needs to be a support that can take that load. The flange bearing right here would be pretty good, but since I already had a regular bearing the right size, I just made a wooden flange for it and I'll use that. Next making a proper hand crank. I think this is a good length for the crank. I was lazy here and let the CNC cut the hexagonal hole, so I only had to make the corners sharp with a chisel. The spinning handle for the crank I turned on the wood lathe. Of course a lifting table like this also needs some wheels. Each of these little ones is rated for 50 kilograms so I think four of them should be strong enough. I meant proper wheels for this project. I knew that it wouldn't be light but here I realized just how heavy it really was. About 40 kilograms. Now it needs a top. I've had this piece here for a long time now because I waited for a day until I had the right project for it. And that day is now. And here the table can shine for the first time. It makes so many things easier. I also turned a plastic bushing that guides the threaded rod on this side. It's not really necessary, but I just wanted to practice turning. I've also reduced the diameter of the threads right here so they won't rub inside the axial bearing. And I've turned this adjusting ring which keeps it in place and prevents it from being pulled out. Now all parts are done and before the final assembly I sanded and finished everything. So now it's time to put this thing together. Here then also put grease on all the joints and moving parts. It's grease from the hardware store that's suited for threads and hinges. And a lot of grease for the threads, about five times the amount that you can see here. And now after about 30 minutes of video, it's done. And probably the coolest thing I've made so far. I think I'll get a lot of use out of this and especially if I have a bigger workshop someday. And I also think I'm going to build another one of these because it was quite a bit of fun building it. 
And during the build I came across a few things that I would change. For example, the bearings that the scissors roll on. I wouldn't use bearings again, but instead wheels or some kind of other rollers. Then there's custom turned shaft for linking the joints. I would also just use the bolts that I used for the frames. And the axial bearing for the spindle, I would rather use a conical roller bearing, which can take both axial and radial load and makes it so simpler to build and a little bit smaller. But the biggest change I would like to try out is to use a hydraulic cylinder instead of a spindle. Because building it with a spindle was quite simple in terms of getting the materials. But with a hydraulic cylinder, using it would be much more comfortable because now when it's all the way down, I have to bend down and then crank it up. With hydraulic cylinder, I could just pump it up with a foot. That's much more comfortable. So yeah, that would be pretty cool. But for now, I think that was enough video. So that's it with the lifting table builds. And I now have to do some more weightlifting. For the wood there was only one logical choice, I needed a speci species. Now they are all equal distant in relation to the hole. On the two glue sif sif faces. I can glue them in place and I'll use the actual piece and the two washers as spacers. Plus the thickness of two pieces of paper. Thank <laughs> you.